Okay, here in part two, we're going to review the boundary condition and how we do this analysis. We're going to define the joint and the spring and damper we needed for the front suspension. So for the boundary condition, the first thing we need to apply is the Earth's gravity. And you can find it under the environment for a typical ANSYS load application. The rest of the load, we need to use the ANSYS motion tab up here. First, we need to define a function expression. So what this does, it tells uh, the solver how we're going to apply the load over the time. For this analysis, I have six second total uh, analysis time. And here what I'm going to do, I'm going to use the first second just to let the system settle down based on the air's gravity. And then I'm going to simulate moving one tire over a bump for three seconds and then another one or two seconds let the system stabilize again so for that i need to define a two function here as you see here the first one is called step zero step zero is technically a heavy side function what it does as you see here it tells the solver hey this function this load starts at time 1, finish at time 3, and here is uh, the loading pattern. In this case, it's the sine function. So let me change that to, for example, to 4 second. Start at a second, uh, time 1, all the way to time 4, and then it's done. So what's happening between uh, time 1 and time 4 is defined by this. Here, by this sign function, I'm simulating passing this bar car over the bump. And just to make it uh, more complicated, we can apply this bump only on one tire. It seems like some one side of the road. So this minus 40 sine time pi 4 is this, taking the amplitude, which means the heights of the bump, you can change that right now. It's about 40 millimeter. I can change that to any number. We simulate the height of the bump. And this uh, sine time P4 is technically this time. And P4, it shows the speed of car. Uh, if I change that, for example, to P8, it means this moving much faster. Or I use 1, it means over the a course of uh, one second, it just goes up and down. So I'm going to use, for example, a four. And so here, just to further show you, here you're going to need a sub entity function expression and just define that function as I show you up there. So I have a function. I can apply that to any load, uh, force, displacement, anything. So I'm going to use that and use this joint load property for the translational joint I have under this plate and use the function expression and technically apply that displacement under this plate. Uh, I have defined function expression. For the second plate, I'm just going to fix that just to make it more complicated. It looks like this bump is just one side of the road. And finally, I can also define some frictional contact here. And I can add it for both of them. We get static frictional contact and dynamic. OK and solve. Okay, it's finished. Let's check out the result. This is the total deformation. So you see the system is pretty stiff because we just used the original front suspension spring and damper property. If I also add some acceleration to this for the driver head, I'm going to pick Driver head applies. So here it shows the 
acceleration and driver head which could get really high at some point it so we're gonna drop this maximum acceleration from 3g to a lower number so I'm gonna use two value which I already figured out I'm gonna use 100 for this 10 200 I'm gonna run it real quick okay it's done let's check out the result real quick so first total acceleration on the driver hit as you see the maximum is dropped by almost 90 percent which is good and check out the total deformation it's much better than we saw before okay 